Good evening, everyone, and thank you so much for joining this monthly series in which we call Grow Your Mind, and we hope that we do inspire your mind for growing fruits and vegetables in your own home and classrooms and just about any environment you would want to, but we also hope to inspire you mentally, physically, and spiritually, and hopefully financially as well. My name is Troy Richardson and I'm your host. I am a US Air Force veteran and I own a health and wellness organization. And about two years ago, I was introduced to this amazing company that not only has um, the ability to grow your own fruits and vegetables, but to get healthy in a whole food plant nutrition way, which I love to share with my fellow veterans. But tonight, we have two uh, co-hosts that are here every month, and I have 150% respect for these two individuals, and they know 200% of what they're about to tell you. They're going to share some incredible and impactful information about growing in the classrooms and in your homes. So we're going to get right into it and thank everyone for, for showing up. Really appreciate that. And um, we're going to get right into it. And we're going to start off with uh, Miss Lori Weeks from the state of Georgia. Lori, welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much, Troy, for what you're doing. And thank you so much, Henry. Um, I love collaborating with you both on just sharing hydroponic, aeroponic gardening. It's just a wonderful way to grow fruits and vegetables with so much ease. You know, as a teacher for 13 years, I often wish that I had had an opportunity to introduce my students and the families, you know, to just an easier way to grow clean, homegrown food. Um, I've often tried my hand at gardening and I was never successful at it because the hot sun, the bugs, the dirt, and the cost often just kept me out of being such a successful gardener. Three years ago, I was introduced to a super easy way, the aeroponic growing sister system, and it just relies on water and nutrients and a pump to just grow all of the clean fruits and vegetables for me and for my family. So today, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have an opportunity to show you the home growing system and the flex growing system. And I'm also gonna show you ways that I've incorporated it right into my very own home. I can often you know, think of so many ideas that I would love you know, to share with students. But right now where I am in my life, I have an opportunity to share it with my family and my nieces and my nephews. And they grow their own food and it's so exciting to see nine and 10 year olds, those are the ages of my nephews and nieces, really get excited and about plants and making the connection about growing plants and eating plants and what that can do for your body. So I'm gonna start first with the home unit. It is an all inclusive unit. I love that when I placed the order, it came with every single thing I needed it has a home growing light. It has a water monitor to make sure that I have enough water in. It has some wheels right here attached so that I could just find a nice comfortable space to put this unit in. And I chose a space just a few steps right outside of my kitchen so that I could grow things like basil and cilantro and rosemary and thyme. I'm also starting to grow some healing foods like echinacea and lavender and chamomile. And I'm exploring what I really have never heard of. And I'm really just looking forward to growing them and incorporating them into my everyday. I've heard about the power of dandelion leaves and dandelion roots. And now I'm able to grow that right in my own home. Here's some thyme and some cilantro some dill, some fennel, some parsley. And here's a look at the tower when I take a, a few steps back. So 
So this is the home unit that is designed to fit. It's just like sleek and sexy and can fit right in the corner of um, a kitchen. I also have right next to it, the flex unit. Now the flex unit, it's called the flex because it's pretty flexible. I can grow with this unit indoors and outdoors. The lights are an accessory to this unit and I can add in light and move this unit inside. And I'm also gonna take a few steps outside and show you the unit that I have outside. So on my inside flex, what I have are some marigolds and some collards, some more dandelion. I also have tomatoes, four different types of tomatoes. And I've started these plants indoors and I plan on moving them outside as soon as the weather warms up. And I also have another tomato and even a pumpkin. I have that growing here. So this is what the flex unit looks like when I take a few steps back. One other thing I wanna point out is that both of these have a microgreen section on them that allows me to grow, by, um, to grow 32 more plants um, and eat them while the leaves are really teeny tiny and that is just packed with nutrition. So stick with me while I take a trip right outside, a few steps outside of my front door. And I'm gonna show you what we're growing outside. I do wanna make sure that everyone knows that one unit is able to produce more than enough greens and herbs for one family. But if you want to do more, it sure is easy to grow and add towers as you feel the need or just as your passion grows. And so here's a, a look at my outdoor unit. And I wanna show you that I am growing on a patio, a real small patio space, and I have no extending yard. But since we're growing vertically, I'm able to grow so much food. I love that I was able to grow this year round. And so some things that I found that are really doing extremely well and continuing to thrive, even through these cold temperatures, are collards and kale, spinach, broccoli, cauliflower. All of those continue to grow very strongly through the winter. What I have on this tower is celery, some more green, some more cilantro, dill, and I wanna show you again, the flex also gives me the ability to put lights on top or it also can, um, I can put an extension. And I wanna show you that I have the microgreen extension. I go crazy for kale. So these are microgreen kale. And look at this bumper crop. We're harvesting it every single day and still it just continues to grow in. So I'm just super excited about that. The pansies, yes, they are edible, as are the marigolds and the, and the nasturtium. Here's a second unit that I have. And I wanted to point out that the flex on this unit, I put the extension where I've added in eight more growing sections. So in this tower, I have some more pansies and celery. And also I've started my seedling for my spring and summer crops. And bear with me, the last thing that I really wanted to share with everyone was this is just a super easy way to let yourself continue to be able to grow outdoors. I purchased this for $15 on Amazon. I think it's a Christmas tree cover, but I just throw that over the tower at night when I know that the temperature is gonna drop below 32 degrees. Also earlier in the year, we did add a fish tank heater into the tank, keeping everything nice and warm and toasty. I'm always excited about sharing the power of adding plants into your everyday. You know, it was just a few years ago, I was experiencing some health changes um, and some health concerns, quite honestly. And my family, they also were on a number of subscriptions. So we came 
to hearing about the tower through hearing about whole food concentrates. It's fruits and vegetables in a capsule or a gummy. We started eating those every day. And that was my aha moment to really understanding what good nutrition, cleanly grown fruits and vegetables can do for your body. I'm so happy to say that three years later, I am a new person. I've never felt better. And to be able to say that at 58 years old, you guys, is just an awesome thing. And my prayer for everyone is that you could feel so good a lot earlier. Just don't wait. I'm prescription free. My family is prescription free. And it's just an amazing opportunity to be part of such a community that really just wants everybody to feel better and do better and all do so together. You guys, thanks so much for letting me share tonight. Wow, Lori, I, I tell you, and I've, I've heard your story a few hundred times and each time it just, it, it seems like it's brand new. Um, your passion, not only for, for growing and helping others, it, it really is contagious. And I just look forward to every month um, doing this call with you. And um, I, I just have, and I made comments like this, not only with you, but other, other um, partners in the company on, on you, you definitely have the best hair on Zoom. And <laughs> there have been several testimonies on, on what fruits and vegetables in abundance in your body does to hair growth and nail growth. And I hear so many stories that again, this community is filled with testimony. And for the, for the guests and anyone who might hear this recording, we're not making this up. We're not trying to impress you, but we want to impress on you the significance of what we are a part of. We're really, helping impact lives. And, and right now, um, honestly, people, at least that I talk to, and I talk to a lot of people, especially in the veteran community, people need hope right now. Um, America needs hope. And I, I, I like to say we're making America healthy again. Um, that's what we're doing. And we, we want you to not only get healthy, but we want you to join this community because it's filled with giving people. And if you love to give, give back to the community, your neighborhood, any organizations you might be a part of, this is an amazing way you can do it. Effortlessly just sharing this information. So with no further ado, we wanna introduce you to the third person of this event we call Grow Your Mind. Again, third Thursday of every month, Mr. Henry Lee calling us all the way from Mexico. What's going on, Henry? Hola, everyone. Great to be here. Um, the thumbs up. Can everyone hear me all right? Tried to do a sound check the other day. Awesome. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and uh, transition into sharing a video with you. Um, and I think Lori has it on a backup just in case. Um, but as Lori said, we, um, we want to just thank you for being here tonight. And whether you're an educator or you are connected with educators, whether it's public or private or community or a church or whatnot, um, you're in the right place at the right time right now. Um, and we wanted to show you uh, just a little snippet, an example of how tower gardens are being used in an actual classroom today by one of our good friends, Stephen Ritz. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, share my screen with you here. And... I turned down the resolution a little bit just so it streams uh, better for you. Who wants to play? My name is Stephen Ritz, and I am CEO, Chief Eternal Optimist of Bronx County. We're going to actually grow our own lunch. We're going to grow our own food today. We're going to go from sea to plate. A towel garden is like this plant, but you don't need soil. And then the water comes up, and then it comes down and rain on the roots. Adults think, you can't farm in the South Bronx. Tell it to these kids, they're farming. For so many, food is the problem. Yet for all of us, food is a solution. 
We have some of the highest rates of juvenile diabetes and juvenile obesity in the nation. And we can change that. We absolutely have the power to change schools in this generation. I think I still see the seed. That, that happens. Exactly. You mean I can pass it around and they can see the seed absolutely. in the plant? My job is to teach kids how we can grow food. And I'm asking everyone to roll up their sleeves and get a little dirty and grow something greater. He lets us plant stuff like salad, cucumbers, tomatoes. My fourth and fifth graders came into a classroom with no windows to build a tower garden and literally turned it into a farm. And we talked about how healthy food builds healthy minds and healthy bodies. And where are we doing it? Right here in school. So did everybody plant the seed? Yes! Yeah! Yeah! The excitement and the joy that these little kids feel putting a seed in the ground and watching it blossom. OMG, as they say, this is their moment. I think he cares about us a lot and he wants us to learn and have fun at the same time. I'm not a farmer, but I'm planting. I'm planting seeds. He always says that like, seeds are like people because they need love and they grow and grow and grow to be successful people. To use 21st century technology to generate food and to create this beautiful thing to sit by that you can actually eat is game changing. It's empowering. They're growing. The plants are growing and they're responsible for it. And when they know they can grow their own, they really start changing the way they see their relationship to the world and their place in it. I love it. Thank you. Okay. All right, so if that doesn't excite you about it, I don't know what does. I'm going to go ahead and move into um, some details that you might be asking yourself in your head, like um, questions like, okay, so how do I get it? How does it work? Um, what can I use it in? How can I use it in my specific classroom? So again, this is our Grow Your Mind webinar that we do every Thursday, um, third Thursday uh, at usually seven o'clock Eastern time, but we moved it up a little bit because of some time conflicts. Um, so we appreciate you being here. This is the video that we just showed you. If you want to look that up on YouTube or get back to the person and that uh, invited you to watch this recording or today, then you can certainly do so. It's Dr. Stephen Ritz teaching by new nurturing minds and gardens. Um, and so this is, uh, this is typically what the tower garden flex looks like that Laurie showed you. You can see in relative size to, to someone, you can uh, see some of the varieties that you can eat on it. She's eating a little strawberry there. If you are a classroom teacher, I don't know about you, um, give it a little thumbs up or a reaction uh, in the comments here. If you um, remember being in the classroom that looks similar like this, that could have been 10 years ago. Your classroom could have looked like <laughs> 50 years ago. As a student, you might relate to being this guy that's bored or disengaged or maybe even pretending to sleep. I don't know if, if you resonate with this, um, but this is something that um, just shocks me because out of all the industries in the world, they have evolved over the past 50 years. This is one of the very few that looks the same. If you go into a classroom today in, in an inner city, suburb, rural, then it's rows of desks, teacher at the front, lecturing and so what if your classroom had evolved into something that looks like this and so you can see our friend dr stephen ritz in the back this is literally what his classroom looks like um, and then in, in the middle of the bronx at one of the lowest performing lowest uh, attending schools uh, in in new york um, he was able to use this tool because of a by an accident of some kid leaving a package of radish seeds behind the radiator started growing up started intriguing his students and you can see their tower gardens in the back they learn how to uh, to plant to grow to maintain to harvest um, and it's even got some business applications as well you might be thinking oh i don't teach high school or i don't teach elementary school um, but this is cross curriculum cross grades you can put it in daycares we have some here in columbus ohio um, elementary schools middle schools um, high school environmental and biology so i have three in my old classroom that i used to, to teach in um, and all the curriculum is available i'll show you how to access that as well and at the end of the day um, you know, it's not just about passing the test. It's about taking it home and talking about what they learn in the dinner table. And we teach them about sustainability. This is what farms are supposed to look like. Lush, green. This is what, it, what life used to be. And unfortunately, over time, desertification has crept into every single country in this world. We've over farmed. We have, uh, the soil has been depleted. The water resources are becoming less. 
And so we teach the kids from a point of what does food look like in your future? And in the future, this is what uh, NASA technology back in the 90s and the early 2000s um, was where they were using this to design some way to grow your food um, and Disney World picked it up. So 2009, Tim Blank um, decided, head holder culturist down there at Epcot Center decided to um, put this into action. If you've ever been down to Disney World, show of hands or in the comments here, give a thumbs up or a yes, Disney World. If you've been to Disney World and Epcot Center, you'll see our tower garden sitting in there. It's one of the very few aeroponic, not hydroponic, aeroponic because the in hydroponics means that the roots sit in water versus aeroponic is where the roots are hanging in the air. So they get oxygenated by the water that is pumped up to the center console and then trickles down using the system, the cascade system. And we're gonna show you what that looks like here in a second. Um, let me show you a, the next video we have for you um, is a time-lapse. So this is a time lapse of a power garden from deeply four weeks. And you can see at week one, week two, because it's constantly being showered, the roots are being showered with nutrients. Week four, peppers, uh, squashes, bikini, even watermelon at the bottom, Swiss shard and rainbow shard climbing to the top at, um, at the top uh, levels there as well. Um, and so you can also get back to the person who invited you to take a look at this um, so they can show you where that video is. This is one of uh, my tower gardens. You can see on the left here, um, this is about one week and then two weeks later, not even two weeks, you can see on the right and you can see the Swiss shard has just blown up on, on uh, the tower of the top. Um, these lights are very similar to, uh, um, I call them light savers because they're they, they remind me of Star Wars. Any Star Wars fans out there? So this is a, uh, these are light blades. There's four of them. They're malleable. They're LED full spectrum. And so they won't heat up and burn anything. They're safe for kids. They're safe for pets. And you can crack them on top side of your head. And they're pr literally um, practically indestructible. And they'll last you for a long time. They don't use much electricity because they're LEDs. Um, you might be asking, okay, <laughs> you guys, what else can I grow on this? And so these are just some examples of some of the produce that you can grow in there. And you can see at the top here, we've got a couple different types of uh, microgreens, um, baby greens, if you will. Um, and then they'll grow even bigger because, again, the roots are being constantly showered by water all the way to the bigger ones at the bottom. You can see those tomatoes, um, all sorts of different types of lettuce and for vine uh, plants. If you have it outside next to a fence, if you have it, um, you can also uh, put a tomato cage on there. And so those vines will just keep on growing. And remember, this is the water source. The only part of the plant that needs water is the roots. So as long as you shower those roots, then it'll continue growing. Um, and what are the advantages? Because you might be asking, like, I already grow tomatoes. I already grow you know, my lettuces. So what are some of the advantages of that? Well, let's go through some of those. It grows three times as fast as it does compared to soil. It goes 30% more yield and it's more nutrient dense. Um, it uses 90 up to 98% less water because any of the water that misses the roots ends up being caught in the basin, pumped right back up to the top. And so none of that is lost. It uses 90% less space because it's vertical. And that was the thing that NASA was getting after because they understand um, if we're trying to, to grow food on Mars or deep space, then we like space is a limiting factor. A amount of land is a limiting factor. Um, a couple of the other benefits that you can see in the middle that we, we teach uh, our, our kids is it's year round. And this is so important because as a classroom teacher, our kids come in in August, September, they start learning about it. By the time they plant their seedlings, then it's cold outside. Ohio has 10 inches of snow right now. So in the middle of the school year, they can't grow outside in their raised beds and their hoop houses and such, but in a tower garden, because it has lights, they can grow indoors all year round instead of having to wait till the springtime in, in April or May to start planting those. And then guess what? School gets out in May now. So the, the, I'll give you a perfect example of money-wise. If you're a classroom teacher or you're connected with classroom teachers, 
let them know if they have a $10,000 grant and they use, let's say $8,000 for that on a, a garden outside, they're only going to get about a, a month and a half worth of use on that garden outside. However, if they were to put that, uh, that money into a tower garden, then they can start learning about it in September when the kids come in to the school year, they can continue planting and do several harvests throughout the entire year. It doesn't require any soil. There's no worms or weeding or mulching. So you don't need to worry about any of that. Um, and it's, it's, uh, it's completely safe. It's food grade plastic. Um, and it, we're going to show you how much money it will save. And so the kids can go home and they can show their parents, this is how much money uh, we actually save on, on, you know, a monthly basis. Um, this is a, a picture of a couple lunch trays that you might remember as a kid. And unfortunately, a lot of lunches still look like this. In the middle, um, you know, you see this bagel pizza with sausage from leftover breakfast the previous day. And, um, you know, recycled uh, yeah, cheese from the salads that the kids, you know, threw away or, or didn't eat uh, the previous day from the salad bar. Um, you know, you're looking at yogurts and applesauce that has preservatives and uh, they, they have shelf lives that are longer than your kids' ages, right? Um, and let's pretend like we're going to be healthy and give them a little bit of, of iceberg lettuce. And we all know that iceberg lettuce isn't the most nutritious, but look at the rest of this. What if the, their lunches looked like this? And this is possible. We can studies show that whatever you put up front for the kids to grab on their plate first is usually um, what they'll fill up their plate. And it's the same thing for adults. And I love this phrase. I taught this for years. You are what you eat. Literally what you put in your mouth becomes you. But it goes even deeper than that because we can show that kids that eat or that, sorry, that grow their own produce are five times more likely to eat it. And that is a study performed by Ohio State University and Cornell University. Um, and what's the secret? The secret is in the gut bacteria. Your microbiome in your large and, and small intestines, literally they will eat whatever you give them and then start telling your body chemically, feed me more of that. So if you are eating chips, raise your hand or in the comments here, write the name of the chips that, that has this phrase. Their tagline is, once you pop, you can't stop. Anyone remember that? Once you pop, you can't stop. That's right. That is Pringles. So Pring this, is, this is actually scientifically backed. If you eat chips, then the bad bacteria eats the chips and then tells your body, eat, feed me more of those chips. So once you pop, you literally can't stop. What if you were to trick the body into eating kale, shard, radish, or, or just any type of uh, greens? And Lori shared a little bit about our Juice Plus products here too. That's your plant powders that have been dehydrated, put into capsule form, and so it by has the mucous membranes go straight in your system, 100% absorbed, that's bioavailability, and literally transforms your cravings. And so the kids start wanting to eat more fruits and vegetables. And we teach this in community centers. We teach them meal prep and they love it. They take it home. They start asking, hey, can we start buying mangoes and different things that they haven't even heard of uh, from home? What if they could, in, instead of a food drive collecting fo uh, canned foods, if we could uh, change their community food pantries and homeless shelters into tower garden farms. And you might be asking again, price-wise, how does it really compare? And so this was um, a study that was done uh, with conventional prices. So this is not even organic prices, conventional prices from the store of arugula, of beans, peppers, celery, et cetera. And how much of this you can grow in a six month period on a tower garden. And you can see all of these values add up to about just under $800 in a six month yield. Um, and uh, this uh, study was done, I think, by this, the University of Mississippi. It says down at the bottom, and we can get that information to you if you'd like. Um, Lori showed you two different models. The one on the left is the tower garden home. It's not just for homes. We have, I just, uh, Denise Jones, one of our elementary schools here um, in between Columbus and, uh, and uh, Dayton, uh, just got three of these for her school. Um, 
and they have casters on the bottom they've got microgreens on the top they've got a water monitor in there the flex you can put on cages extensions on the top um, all sorts of different um, accessories that you can throw on there um, and definitely get back to the person that that invited you to this video so they can show you the more in more detail what's included um, this is what it looks like when it arrives all of it can be packed into the basin and that's what it looks like after four weeks of growing those seedlings if you want three like Denise just did for her school um, then you can get a, a set of three that used to be called a science bundle now it's called a family garden and it comes with a couple accessories with that or if you want to go big right a community garden is a dozen or a tower farm and so this i want to show you a picture of what this is this is um a uh one of my favorite places called true gardens and so truegarden.com is a greenhouse massive in the uh, suburb of Phoenix called Mesa, Arizona. And you can see they have hundreds of these that are two story high. I would encourage you to check out this out, um, especially if you are already a tower gardener or connected with them, you can check out the seedlings um, and all the different sales that they have. But the videos down at the bottom do a very good job of explaining large scale tower farms. And speaking of tower farms, just mapped out a couple tower farms for you. You can see most of them are in the US. Um, we also have some in Alaska. How awesome is that? In the middle of the frozen tundra, um, you, can, uh, you can be growing fresh produce. Um, I just got back from two months in Hawaii. In Hawaii, they have a couple different tower farms there. I'm just going to go ahead and click on one of these here. I usually get this right. That one right there looks like, yep, this is O'Hare International Airport. If you have ever gone through Chicago before, I know they're getting blasted with snow right now, but next time you're at O'Hare, check out Terminal 2. On the second floor, there's two story tall, 26 tower gardens that the 68 restaurants share the produce. So next time you're in O'Hare Airport, eat at Max and Irma's or TJ Friday's. And if you get a salad or you get a burger um, and you take a look at the lettuce and some of the chives or whatever, chances are some of that came from the tower gardens. Pretty cool, right? Um, so Again, this webinar is primarily for educators, so we want to show you um, what kind of resources are available to you as an educator. Um, and so if you go to uh, the site that the person invited you to this call, then they'll give you access to all the lesson plans um, from K adaptable all the way through high school and even in college, and we can help you out with that. Um, and they're all uh, standards based cross curriculum, they can adapt to uh, whatever state standards you're in. So just some great resources for you. And on that note, we just wanted to end with, um, you know, our community of tower gardeners is just worldwide. And right now, um, the main market is here in the US in Canada. Um, and this is where you come in, we need your help, because this is the this is no longer the future of food. This is the gardening of today. So again, appreciate you guys being here, taking your uh, your Thursday evening to be with us. Um, and I'm going to stop my screen share and turn it back over to Troy. Hey, Henry. I mean, same thing with Lori, man. Just every, every month, I still learn from both of you. And that's the beauty of this thing, um, that you continue to inspire. Um, and if I know you're inspiring me, then someone who's just brand new to this, they're going to really get excited. When, when you broke down the amount of money that you can save, again, we're all about inspiring. And, and, and right now, people need hope. People, they want to save money. And, and what better way to save money than eating healthy at the same time? It's just a win-win. But I don't want to leave tonight without Lori, the, the super mom, explaining the Healthy Starts Family program that we also are able to help almost 2 million kids right now in that program. So Lori, if you could please explain that to our, our guests and, and maybe some partners aren't aware of that also. My pleasure. You know, it was the Healthy Starts for Families that absolutely gave me an opportunity to share 
fruits and vegetables in the form of a capsule or a gummy with all of my family. I found out that when I placed an adult order, so if you place an order of Juice Plus, a child will get fruits and vegetables absolutely free. And they um, have an opportunity to eat it as for four years. I mean, how awesome is that? My daughter, who was in her last year of college at Georgia Southern, actually was able to get fresh fruits and vegetables in a gummy and it made such changes for her. Dormitory food was looking much like the food that Henry just shared with you. And it really did compromise her health. I'm so happy to say that she is healthier and stronger today because of the children's health study. I would encourage everyone to take advantage of that. Amen, thank you so much, Lori. Um, and as Henry mentioned, there are resources available to you, not only the curriculums, but for you educators out there wondering, how am I gonna pay for this? And you, you're, you're looking at grants. We have resources to help you with the grant process. Um, we have fundraising. Um, if the grant's not working for you, it might be a little bit too slow. Um, get back to the person who invited you and, and they can get with me because I work with the nation's leading fundraising organization, American Cancer Society, churches, it doesn't matter. We can help you. We want to help you get these tower gardens into your environment. So don't don't take no for an answer. Reach out to someone and we'll work out a we'll work out a solution together. But um again, I just want to thank all of you. And I know yesterday was the start of Lent and many people are, are making sacrifices um, to just you know give up certain things in their life. But I just ask you to give up one one food that you know you should not be eating. And there's always at least one. So I'm just gonna encourage you to just give up one bad habit of eating bad food, okay? Let's just start there. But we have many events um, in this community that will help you, guide you. We have a Shred 10 program um, that will definitely help you kickstart your journey. Uh, I am starting a, a boot camp Monday 5 a.m. to 5.30, get back to the person who invited you and let's just get healthy together. But you're not alone in this journey. We want to stress that. You don't have to do this alone. Everybody needs help. Everybody needs someone to help them be accountable. And there is someone in, in this community that you can definitely relate to. So please just reach out and let's, let's be part of this thing together and let's make America healthy again. So again, from the bottom of my heart, I love you all so much. Um, and I really mean that I'm sincere. I love everyone. Um, and I must ask you to please look out on Facebook or any social media platform. I have a campaign going on out there. Every day is Veterans Day because every day, 18 to 22 servicemen or service women just give up hope and they're taking their lives every day. Think about that, 18 to 22. It's, it's just unacceptable. And I'm really trying to bring focus to that because we have to make a difference in the lives of not just veterans, but everyone. As I said, that four letter word, hope. Um, a lot of people need that hope instilled in their life right now, not tomorrow, like right now. So. Thank you again for just, again, every day is Veterans Day, change.org, just sign the petition. You don't have to donate any money, um, just sign your name, okay? But thank you again, grow your mind, third Thursday of every month. Lori, Henry, any, any parting words from either one of you? Um, I will just say that there are tons of other resources that we can put in your hands. Um, and one of those is one of my favorites by the Hicks sisters on Saturday evenings at eight o'clock. You can put that as a save the date on your calendar. Um, and again, get back to the person who shared this with you and they'll give you details on how to log on. Absolutely. Okay. 
Thanks, everyone. We're going to stop the recording. But if anyone wants to stay on,